Hello fellow RVers, today I'm gonna to be talking about solving another problem. Well, actually it's a big problem. If you're one of my subscribers, then you know that most of my videos are about solving problems as an RVer. And if you're like myself and you are an espresso lover, you're used to getting that shot of espresso in the morning, maybe two or more, and you maybe have a big espresso maker at your house, your office, you know, it's a semi-automatic or an automatic espresso machine. You're used to getting those espresso shots every morning. And so then what do you do on the weekends when you're out camping in the RV? You're used to that espresso, that good quality, good tasting espresso. What do you do? You can't bring that big espresso machine along with you in the RV, of course and you don't wanna settle for drip coffee, right? And so today we're gonna to be talking about this guy here, the Casa Brews Espresso Maker. It solves that problem. And so in today's video, my goal is to answer three questions. The first one is, how compact is the Casa Brews Espresso Machine? Where does it fit? I'll give you all the dimensions and such. Secondly, and probably most importantly, does it make good quality, good tasting espresso or your drink of choice, you know, whether it's a cappuccino or a latte. So I'll actually demonstrate and show you what it looks like. And then third, who do I recommend this to or what applications do I recommend this for? So definitely stick around to the end. Okay, so first question, how compact is the Casabers Espresso machine? And you know, if you're in an RV, then space is always a premium, especially if you're in a smaller RV. So let me pull out the tape measure and I'll just go ahead and give you the dimensions. The height on the unit you can see is just under 12 inches at the highest point there. And then on the width, the actual body itself you can see is just under five inches. And then if you factor in the steam knob over there, it's just under five and a half inches across. And then on the depth over there, you can see the water reservoir in the back there that's attached to it. If we go all the way to the front, it is just under 12 inches. And so that's what makes this unit so compact. You know, a lot of the espresso machines that we have at home or at the office, they're much larger. I mean, they might take up the entire real estate of, of this stove area right here, but this is very compact. You can see you've got plenty of space between the top of the unit and your overhead cabinets. This is a pretty typical compact RV kitchen layout here. And you can see it fits very nicely right there. It's got a power cord attached to it plenty of room to reach up and grab that outlet right there. And I actually keep mine in the pantry over here and it fits very nicely. Again, this is a very typical RV pantry. It fits both in the height dimension here and the width, plenty of depth, of course, going back in there. And so it's perfect really for RVs given that, you know, space is at a premium and this one is extra compact. But secondly, let's talk about really the most important question. And that is, does the Casa Brews espresso machine make good quality, good tasting espresso, right? I mean, if it doesn't accomplish that specific goal, then it's probably not worth bringing along in the RV, let alone buying it in the first place. And so to do that, I'm going to demonstrate and we'll make a drink together here in just a minute. Now, full disclaimer, I'm not a barista. I get that there's a lot of different ways to, to make your own espresso, a lot of different preferences out there. And so this is not a, a technical demonstration, a how-to, but more just showing you, here's how I use this particular machine. This is a manual machine. And so there's a lot of different things that you, as the operator, have to do in order to get that good quality, good tasting espresso. And I'll just confess that I'm still learning that. You know, the machine that I use at home on a regular basis is more of a semi-automatic machine and so it takes care of a lot of those different variables for me but let's go ahead and demonstrate i'm going to be making a cappuccino today that's my drink of choice we'll go ahead and get the machine powered on here the machine preheats when you turn it on by default and so when you see all the lights lit up solid across the front here then that preheating is is complete it's usually pretty quick and then the manufacturer actually recommends preheating the elements and everything. You know, the unit itself is preheating, but we want to preheat the porta filter and the filter basket because, as you know, when you're making espresso, if that extraction temperature isn't ideal, that can impact the flavor and the taste. And so we're just going to make a, a dummy load. Of course, you get the porta filter and the two different baskets, the single and the double. I typically use the double. But we'll go ahead and just run. A, an empty load and that way everything gets nice and 
heated up, you can see all the, the lights are lit solid on the front there, which means it's ready. And so we're gonna go ahead and run that. Now notice how these Yeti cups, these Yeti mugs, just barely fit under there, so that's pretty nice. Well, let's go ahead and I'm gonna hit the two cup button and we'll go ahead and get everything nice and heated up. You can hear what the pump sounds like. It's completely you know, average compared to other espresso machines, not overly loud. Of course, it's got a pressure dial right here because there's no coffee in there. It's gonna be likely reading a little bit on the low side for this one. Okay, so everything's nice and heated up. We'll go ahead and dump that out. And then we'll go ahead and load up our porta filter and our basket with the actual coffee there. Just wipe that out real quick here. It's nice and heated up. Now, as far as the, the coffee goes, so what I choose to do is go ahead and grind my coffee ahead of time. When I'm going on a camping trip, I'll grind it at home using my nice high quality burr grinder. And then I'll just put what I need just enough to get through the weekend in this, this nice container right here with the little breather valve on top. And so that way you get that nice, fresh tasting coffee. So go ahead and load up our basket here. You could certainly bring along a scale, you know, if you really want it to be accurate when you're loading and dosing here, but you know, in an RV space is limited. So I'm usually, I'm just guessing and estimating approximately based on the fill level. And then as far as uh, tamping it down, you can see with the scoop that they give you with the machine, you do have a little a tamper on the opposite side, but I gotta say it's much more rewarding <laughs> and satisfying to use one like this. So we'll go ahead and tamp that down nicely. We've got a good looking dose here. Make sure there's no coffee on the outside that could impair the, the seal. All right, so there's our, our dose looking really good there. We'll go ahead and put it on the machine, rotate it, lock it into place. Then if you wanna add any, any uh, syrup or flavor at this point, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna add some, some peanut butter cup, sugar free. All right, so everything's ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and do our drink here. I'm gonna time it as well, so you kind of get an idea the extraction time. I'm doing the two cup again, so we'll go ahead and hit start. Start our timer right here. And there it goes. Really nice color coming out. Oh, it smells really good, wow. Color is looking really good there. Pressure's looking pretty decent as well. Going just a little bit on the long side, perhaps. All right, so right about 33 seconds approximately. So again, as a manual machine, you take that input, adjust maybe the grind of your coffee, that sort of thing to get that ideal, you know, in the mid twenties or so. But check out this right here i'm gonna tip it so you can see it look at that color there it's even got some crema on top there it smells absolutely amazing but let's go ahead and continue with our, our cappuccino and so the beautiful thing about this machine here is it does have a, a, a steam wand off to the side so you can froth milk and so i'm gonna go ahead and do that to complete our drink here now, when you're using the steam, there's a button off to the far right right here, and you basically tap that. And again, when it illuminates, it's preheated and ready to go. Sometimes there's a little bit of, of water that comes out of the steam, and so I like to purge it once it's ready to go. And you're gonna use this knob right here to control that steam. So there it goes, it's lit. So we'll go ahead and turn it on and just purge it. Just a little bit of water coming out of there. Wait for the steam there. There it goes, and I'm gonna shut that off. That way you don't get that in the, the coffee. I like just a little bit of milk in my cappuccino. I've got about, oh, maybe four and a half, five ounces right here, and I just use 2%. But we're gonna go ahead and turn on the steam knob and get our milk steaming here. And again, this is a manual machine, so you know you gotta perfect your, your technique. 
and that's something that I still am working on. But this machine, it's it's pretty easy, pretty basic to work with. Trying to get those bubbles looking just right, right size, and also getting that circulation. Looking good so far, nice little bubbles, micro bubbles. Got a nice flow going on in the cup. I'll froth it up just a little bit more and I'm just kind of sliding down on the wand to keep that tip just barely inside. And then, that looks pretty good there. Then I'm gonna go all the way in and heat it up and wait till it feels just a little bit too hot to touch. That feels pretty good right about there. So I'm gonna shut that off. And then of course we want to wipe off the wand right there to make sure none of that milk gets stuck on there. All right, so let's check out how our milk looks. Very, very nice. So we're gonna kind of stir it up a little bit to to mix up some of those larger bubbles into the, the little ones there. All right, looking pretty good. And then we're going to pour into our lovely espresso shot right there, okay? All right, beautiful. So we've got some, uh, some artwork there. If you can't tell, that is a volcano. Very nice, right? Uh, but no, in all seriousness, this is a really good smelling cappuccino right here. But more importantly, what does it taste like? Wow, that is a, a very good cappuccino. Nice shot of espresso. It's got a real balanced taste to it. Now this is a manual machine. And so, like I said, you know, you have to learn how to adjust different inputs to get the desired output. But I gotta say that is very good. I've been using the machine for a couple weeks now and adapting to it, learning, you know, what it likes. But I will say this about the machine that it, it seems to be very consistent, right? And I think that's one of the most important things with an espresso machine is that it's consistent. So that as you're giving it different inputs and fine tuning the, the size of your, your grinds and whatnot, you know, that it's outputting at least consistent results. So it's predictable. Mm, that is really good. Let's uh, talk about third though. Who would I recommend this machine to or what applications to use it for? Now, full disclaimer, Castle Brews sent me their espresso machine here and asked me to do a video on it. Of course, these are my own unbiased thoughts and opinions on it. I would definitely recommend this machine to fellow RVers like myself because it does solve the problem of, you know, how do you get that espresso shot that you're accustomed to when you're out camping on the, the weekends. And so because it's so compact and it, you know, it has the steam wand and everything, I mean, really the possibilities are endless. So definitely recommend it if you're a fellow RVer like myself. I also think that if you're on a budget and you're looking to get into espresso making, you know, maybe you like the way espresso tastes when you order at the coffee shop and you're looking to make it yourself at home, but you're not sure if you wanna, you know, shell out the big bucks for an expensive uh, semi-automatic, you know, espresso machine at home. I think this would be a great alternative to start with, kind of a starter machine. It is manual, like I've said several times, so there's gonna be that, that learning curve, you know, learning the different inputs and how to do it to get the, the desired drink that you're looking to get. But I think once you get the hang of it, I found the machine is very predictable and it's, you know, affordable. And so I definitely think it's a great starter machine as well. And of course it's got great reviews on Amazon. The manufacturer clearly stands behind their product. And so I do think it is a, a very good value. Now last, let me close out the video by mentioning some accessories that you may want to buy with the Casa Brews espresso machine. You can see right here basically all that it comes with here. So you get the double basket, the single basket, the porta filter, and this nice little scoop and tamper there. But like you saw in the video, for tamping, it is a lot more satisfying to use something like this. It is a 51 millimeter size there, so pretty common. And then if you're gonna be steaming or frothing milk up, nice little pitcher like this 
works very well. And then, like I said, for the, the coffee grinds themselves, you know, if you have a burr grinder at home already, you can store that in a nice container like this with a little breather valve on top. So that works very nicely. And then if you like a little bit of, of sweetness and flavor, these syrups are, are pretty good from, from Jordan's, Jordan's Skinny Syrups. I'll put links to all this stuff in the description below, along with a link to purchase the Casa Brews espresso machine. So I appreciate you guys using those affiliate links to help support the channel. If you got any questions, definitely drop me a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.